Ah yes, as the proverbial saying goes, when life gives you CDs, make an overly powerful wrist-mounted CD launcher. This device rapidly fires CDs at 33 miles an hour, allowing it to slice your produce clean in half and shatter upon impact, making for some really cool slow-mo. I got the idea for this contraption when I became the proud owner of a box of mini CDs, which are slightly smaller than their normal size counterparts. Now, if you're like me and were born this century, a CD is an archaic piece of technology used by several ancient civilizations to play things like music. And while I don't have any practical use for these miniaturized prehistoric discs, they just so happen to make the perfect projectiles for slicing things. And the engineer in me just can't pass up that opportunity. Okay, the plan here is actually pretty simple. If we spin a flywheel really fast and slide a CD under it, we can shoot that CD. And what better way to achieve high speeds than with a drone motor? Paired with an ESC or electric speed controller, these motors can spin like crazy. 40,000 RPM crazy. Now, I used the term flywheel a second ago. A flywheel is simply a rotating device used to store and release rotational energy. You'll commonly find flywheel shooters being used in competitive robotics, since they're pretty much the most effective way to rapidly shoot projectiles. Well, apart from guns. America. When it comes to designing a flywheel, there's two key design parameters to consider. The first is the flywheel's radius, which determines the velocity of the projectile. A bigger radius means a faster projectile, since the projectile's exit velocity, neglecting energy loss, is equal to omega r, where omega is the angular velocity of the flywheel. The second design parameter is the moment of inertia of the flywheel, or its resistance to rotational motion. This determines how much energy the flywheel can store. The stored energy of a flywheel is equal to one half i omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia of the flywheel, and omega is once again the angular velocity of the flywheel. As you can see, a higher moment of inertia means more stored energy. More stored energy means that the flywheel won't slow down as much in between shots, improving shot consistency. Now the cool thing about these two design parameters is that they aren't mutually exclusive. The moment of inertia actually depends on the radius. So to get the best design, I ran some calculations and went through a couple of design iterations, eventually landing on this two-part flywheel that squeezes an O-ring in the middle. Let's spin it up and see what happens. Really weird things start to occur when you spin stretchy parts at unholy speeds. That 40,000 RPM is causing a ton of centrifugal force to be generated, which makes the O-ring stretch like a rubber band on a hot summer day in Florida. But I think I have a solution. What if we squeeze the O-ring even more and clamp it with some screws? Nope, guess not. All right, what if we squeeze the O-ring even more and use even more screws? Not even close. Okay, let's change it up a bit. For my next trick, I've added a lip to the flywheel to help further retain the O-ring. On top of that, I've squeezed the O-ring just a bit more. Wow, that surprisingly worked. All right, all right, all right. I say we get some shooting action going with this test shooter that I built, which is Barbie themed, of course. Let the testing commence. Take a look at that spin. Just beautiful. And it's not an accident either. Spinning projectiles actually have greater stability and accuracy than non-spinning ones. 
This is because of something called gyroscopic stability, and it's the same principle that allows a spinning top to stay upright. The way I'm generating spin is with an angled flywheel that spins the side of the CD, driving it into this rubber strip that'll prevent slipping and allow rolling. Another key insight into the design of the shooter is that a faster flywheel doesn't necessarily mean a faster projectile. This was something I discovered during testing, and it seems counterintuitive. I mean, both of our previous equations showed favorable results if we keep increasing the speed of the flywheel, right? Well, reality is often disappointing, and the reality of the matter is that if you keep increasing the speed of the flywheel, you'll eventually get to a point where the flywheel slips on the CD, reducing the CD's projected speed. And the reason I know this is because I recorded the speed of the CD during testing, using my ballistic chronograph. After plotting the data, you can see that the optimal throttle level occurs right before you start to get a drop in speed. Beyond the optimal throttle level is where you start to get diminishing and eventually negative returns. This is what I call the no-go zone. The zone that is simply way too fast for all of that rotational energy to transfer from the flywheel to the CD. But with every rule comes its exception. And here, there actually is a method that can be used to operate in the no-go zone while also increasing the speed of the CD. It's called a second flywheel. The idea here is to spin the first flywheel at the previous optimal throttle level, and then spin the second flywheel at a new, slightly faster optimal throttle level that we'll determine through testing. Incrementally transferring energy to the CD in stages should result in an even faster speed than trying to transfer all of that energy at once. But theory can only take you so far. So how about we test that out? The data shows a whopping 54% increase in speed using the second flywheel, which is awesome. And some of you might point out that if I stacked up several more stages of flywheels, I could further accelerate the CD. And you'd be absolutely correct. It's just that my arm is only so long, so I think we'll stick with just two for now. Now that we have a way to shoot the CDs, how exactly are we going to store and then release them? Well. It's time to make a magazine. The magazine is composed of several parts. The bottom housing has these really strong N52 grade magnets that are going to allow the magazine to stick onto the shooter. The top housing has a spring activated stopper that'll retain the CDs. All the parts sort of just stack on top of each other like a sandwich, leaving us with this. The magazine stores 25 CDs that can be slid in through the entrance and ejected just as easily. And with that stopper, the CDs won't be able to fall out. To automatically eject the CDs, I'm using a super fast RC servo motor. The servo has an arm attached to it, and by adding magnets to this plate, I can clip on the magazine and use the servo to eject the CDs. Part of the reason this works is because of that cutout on the bottom of the magazine that perfectly matches the trajectory of the servo arm, providing a path to eject a single CD at a time. And with just a little bit of code, voila, we have automatic ejection. But just how fast is the firing rate of this thing? Well, there's only one way to find out. The maximum reliable firing rate is 5 CPS, or CDs per second. Not too bad. With both the launcher and magazine designed and tested, it's time to merge them into one wrist-mounted launcher, which means even more designing, more prototyping, and more plastic. Enough to really cause some problems for the sea turtles. But eventually, I came up with this design. So let's build it.
doing some final testing to make sure everything is working properly. Surprisingly, I'm getting much faster speeds than the prototype double stage shooter tests. Both of these tests should be identical because both shooters are the exact same design. But hey, it works better than ever. So I say we take this bad boy out for a spin and uh, see what kind of damage we can do. It just dawned on me. You know what would make this so much cooler? If it was made from metal. How about we get it machined from today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online service for CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, PCB making. I got my parts CNC machined in aluminum by simply uploading my files, selecting some options, and requesting a quote. It's that simple. Right before I knew it, the parts were at my doorstep, and after opening them up, I gotta say, they look amazing. CNC machining offers really high dimensional accuracy and a great surface finish. Don't let your access to machining hold you back. Check out PCBWay by going to the link in my description, and if you use the code on the screen, you can get $10 off your next purchase of $30 or more, making you one step closer from turning your ideas into reality. Oh yeah, the metal version looks sick. But aesthetics aren't the only reason I switched to aluminum. You see, the motors can get pretty hot. So I figured I would add a heat sink to the flywheel design to help dissipate some of that heat. Since aluminum has a high thermal conductivity, the fins on the heat sink become really efficient in cooling the motor. On top of that, the motors generate a ton of airflow by spinning at a high RPM. And the heat sink can take advantage of that becoming even more effective in dumping all of that thermal energy into the surrounding air. Boy am I glad I didn't skip my heat and mass class last semester. You never really know when the things you learn in school will come in handy. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's clobbering time.
れるんですよ。Oh, damn. Yo, that's cool. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> Actually, I'll let you guys take a shot at it too. That's cool. Yo. Where'd you get that wood from? Uh, Home Depot. There's one last thing I want to try out. I think it'd be pretty cool if I could use the launcher to break some glass. And、uh, as you can see, I'm not really having any luck. Up close and personal with not a single scratch. Jeez. What if I use metal CDs? I also got these manufactured at PCBWay. They were laser cut. Ugh, hopeless. I guess we'll just have to tackle this in the next version. Oh well. <laughs>